Hey everyone, in this tutorial series, I'm going to introduce the new Building Gen plugin for iClone. We'll explore how you can import custom assets from external online sources like Sketchfab or Unreal Marketplace and aggregate them into packaged building templates that can be quickly and easily applied in a variety of project scenarios. In this first video, we're going to walk through how you can obtain a modular content pack from Unreal Marketplace and import and organize the various elements in iClone so that they later can be saved as a building package compatible with Building Gen. As mentioned, there are a number of source assets available from sites like Sketchfab, TurboSquid, or Unreal Marketplace. In this series, we're going to be using this Beach Villa pack from Unreal Marketplace. Once downloaded in FBX format, you'll generally have separate folders for meshes and textures. If we import in this first FBX, you'll see an option to break the items up into subprops. Click Yes here, as we want to break everything down to its simplest elements. You'll notice as well that there are a number of duplicate meshes here, so let's multi-select the ones with roof in the name, right-click, and detach from the main parent mesh and add them into a new collection called Source. From there, I want to assign the proper materials from the FBX Textures folder. It just so happens that all of these meshes all have materials with wall in the name, so I'll just search that and apply the diffuse, normal, roughness, and ambient occlusion textures to their appropriate slots. You'll also want to ensure that you set the diffuse color under material settings to pure white. If you know that these elements all use the same materials, a quick way to transfer all of the maps and properties from one to another is to use the eyedropper and paint bucket tools. Okay, once we've got the material set up for our first elements, let's move on to getting the transform, pivot, and scale values consistent. The pivot point can be easily set to the top middle in the pivot section under the attributes tab. And you also want to ensure that you reset the transform and scale values, then hit reset to zero out the world position values. This will bring the part to our scene root. You can repeat the process for the other elements, being sure to place the pivot point appropriately based on where that part will mainly be utilized in your final structure. We then want to start saving our elements one by one, starting with the large one here as it's already zeroed out to the scene root. Be sure to use consistent naming when saving to the custom tab, and also be sure to zero out the world position before saving. Let's import in this FBX containing the wall elements next. You can see in the material list that a number of the subprop meshes contain the word wall. If you have same name material checked below under effect settings, then when you apply a texture map to any channel, it will apply to all of the subprop meshes with the same material name. This is a quick way to apply texture maps to multiple subprop meshes simultaneously. Again, be sure to set the diffuse channel value to pure white before continuing. If the set that you've downloaded doesn't contain any glass-related textures, you can find a variety of suitable materials in the Content Manager under Media Material Traditional. Keep in mind that results will vary based on which final render engine you're using, as these are all made for iClone rendering. Also be aware that you can set the shader type to reflection surface as well. However, here you want to be aware that setting too many surfaces to the shader type increases resource consumption exponentially and should be used sparingly. You can repeat this process for any other subprop mesh that you want to have reflective properties. 
we can assign the proper textures to the door meshes using the same process as just described. As these doors are all pretty unique mesh types, let's include them all into our eventual building gen package. As with the last scenario, we want to start off by detaching them from all the parent meshes by multi-selecting and selecting Detach from the right-click menu. The doors are a bit more complex than your average roof section as they have hinges and rotation. Let's start with this one door here, again making sure to set the pivot point to the middle, then zeroing out all of the values until it's at the seam root. Now when it comes to certain vertical elements like doors, we need to ensure that they're facing the proper way. To do this, press the F hotkey to focus on the determined front of your mesh. If it is not facing towards the camera, then ensure that you rotate it 90 degrees so it is. You then want to reset the scale and transform once again before saving it. In this case, we also want to ensure that the edges of the doorway match completely with the building wall and floor. We've already saved the floor ceiling tile, so we can now move it around freely to ensure that its position matches the edge of our door frames. If we move it so that the edge snaps to the scene root, then we can readjust the pivot position of the door frame so that it's on the front bottom, then reset all the values once again. Now that we've ensured proper alignment between the door and floor ceiling elements, we can proceed to save the doorway element to the same folder, remembering to keep the naming consistent. We can then move it to the finished source collection to keep things organized. Okay, next let's tackle this door frame that has a rotating door within. You can see that it's made up of three separate sub meshes, including the door handle. Because the doorknob will be consistently positioned on the door, we can right click and attach it to the door. For the door to the door frame, however, we're going to use Link for now. I'll then proceed to adjust the alignment of the door elements to our previously positioned floor panel so that they align correctly. And set the pivot points for the door itself to allow it to rotate properly along the hinges. It's recommended to place the pivot point at the bottom corner, as this ensures better alignment of the height between the frame and the door. Don't forget to save the various door elements to our dedicated folder individually, keeping the names consistent as always. For these columns, we'll want them to eventually extend midway into the walls, therefore it's ideal to set the pivot points to the middle bottom here. Proceed to save as usual. For our railings, we're going to save the two elements separately as well, starting with the internal rails and then proceeding onto the columns. Again, be sure to place the pivot points according to where you want these elements to end up in your building gen set. We can continue onto the glass dividers, repeating the same process of zeroing out the scale, transform, and position values before saving. Once you finish saving all of the separate building elements, you'll want to ensure that you place them in an organized folder structure. Create your relevant folders in the Content Manager, and then click and drag the proper elements to their respective folders. That covers how to get everything organized for packaging your first building gen set. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll cover how to package, edit, and finally construct your building using this efficient workflow. Stay tuned!